Hello and welcome. In this lab, I'll demonstrate how to configure an AAA server to authenticate logins, that is username and passwords, on network devices. Now, an AAA server provides th three things. The first A is for authentication, which is authentica uh, authenticating a username and a password that you're trying to log in with to a device. The second A is for authorization, which is what the account is allowed to do on the device once they have been authenticated. The third A is for accounting, which is making a record of what was done during the time the account was logged in. So the difference between having an AAA server to validate logins as opposed to validating logins on the local database is that the AAA server provides a central management of users and passwords. So it makes it easy to manage these accounts when you have many devices on the network. Because think about having each username and password in its own database on every device on your network. Whenever you need to make a change, that change does not get replicated across any other device, but only the device that it is local to. However, with an AAA server or a centrally managed server, whenever you make a change, you only make the change once on the AAA server and that change is good for all the devices on the network. So I've configured a lab in Packet Tracer with uh, two routers, a switch, my AAA server, and uh, a PC, which I'll be referring to as the admin PC. So this is my AAA server here, and I've configured it with an IP address of 1.168.1.10, and this is my uh, computer which I'll be uh, using Telnet to access the routers once they are configured. So what I've uh, done just to save some time, I've already configured uh, the IP addresses on the, all the interfaces and I've done some ping tests to make sure that all the devices can uh, connect to each other on the network. So I'll go ahead now and uh, perf uh, perform uh, some of the uh, commands on the two routers. I'll start with uh, the first router, router uh, 0. And you can see at the uh, uh, side of the lab here, I've uh, listed some commands that I'll be using in this lab to make my configurations on the two routers. So over in router 1, I've already configured a host name. And this host name is very important because we'll need this uh, uh, host name, uh, the exact host name, to configure in our uh, radio server. So the first thing I need to do is create a local account uh, on the device and this will be stored in the local database on this device. And I'll just create a, a local account called local admin. And I'll put a secret of a password. I'll just change the A to an ampersand. And the next thing I need to do is to enable a login. So I'll use command enable and I'll just use a password as Cisco, replacing the I with an exclamation. So the next step is to enable the AAA authentication in this uh, router. So the command for that is AAA new model and that will enable the AAA. You can look at the side um, I have the commands so you can pause the video this time and uh, just make a note of uh, all those commands and that's what I'll be using in this router. So the next command is to create an authentication method list. So the command for that is AAA authentication and uh, login. So I'm, I'm enabling authentication login and I'm going to use a default method list. So I can use two options. One is default, which is a default list configured on the router already or available to use. The other option is to create a method list with a name 
of my choosing. So just for the, just for this lab, I'll be using a default or the, the default method this. Now I need to specify the options. The options is basically stating what method in this method list should the router use to authenticate or to verify the login that I'm attempting to use. So because it's a radio server, I have to use the word group and then specify if it's a radius or a TACAC server. So in this case, I'm using a radius server. So I'll have to say group, radius, and then local. So the local is, is saying that if the radius server, the local is actually the second part or the second method that the access list is specifying. So if the radius server is not available on the network, then use a local database to verify the login. So the next step now is to specify the radius server that I'll want to reference. So this command is uh, radius server host and I'll have to specify uh, the host uh, IP address and the IP address I'm using is 192.168.1.10 that's configured on my radius server and then I'll have to specify the server key. So the next command is to specify the radio server key and this key that I'll be specifying on this router must match exactly what I'm configuring on the radio server. So the command for that is radio server key and uh, the key that, I'm, that I'll be using is rat key. Now notice the uppercase R and the uppercase K. This is case sensitive. It must be exactly the same on the radio server. So three things must, must match here. The radio server key, the host name which is router zero in our case and the IP address of the host. Those are the three things that must match when, when making the configuration in the RADIUS uh, server. Now, before making any further configurations on the router, I'll need to go over to the, to the RADIUS server and make uh, some configurations uh, by starting the AAA service. So um, by default, it's off. So I'm just gonna turn it on and uh, I'm gonna add the, the two routers as clients into the radius server. So the first router I'm going to add will be the router zero. So under client name, I'll enter the exact host name of the router and the IP address. So the IP address that I've uh, configured is 192.168.1.1. And the secret here is the key that I've used on the server in the previous configuration, which is rat key with an uppercase R and uppercase K. The server type you notice uh, is also radius. And here I can verify that the key, I just want to verify that this is the exact key that I'll be using. If that key is not the same, it will not work. So on my server, I'll verify that the key value that I'm using is rat key. And on the server, I'll go ahead and verify that I'm using the router name exactly as the host name of the router, the IP address and the server type is radius and the key value is rat key. So I'll go ahead and add a username and password in the AA server database and I'll use remote admin with a similar password that I've created on the router. Now, now remember this account does not exist in the local database on the router. The account that I've created was local admin. This account I'm going to use remote admin just to separate the two of them. I'll go ahead and add that. And now I'll add my second client, which is router two to the database. So now that I've configured the server to use an AAA uh, server for authentication, and I've also done the configurations on the AAA server itself, I need to now fi this AAA authentication or AAA login on the VTY lines. So whenever I'm trying to access the server from a remote location via SSH or Telnet, the VTY lines will authenticate through the AAA server. So I need to specify that. So, so the command to to apply this uh, default list is login authentication default. 
and I'm using default because that's what I've configured uh, earlier when I was configuring the authentication method list. So the next part in this lab involved testing my connection from the remote PC to the router. So I'll use uh, just Telnet to access the router. So it gave me a connection and it asked me to, uh, for the username and password. And here is where I'm going to specify the username that I created on the AA server, which was remote admin with the password that I created of password, just changing the A to an ampersand. Okay, so that gave me access to the router. And if I try to go into the configuration mode and I um, issue the command EN, it will ask me for the password. And this is the enable password that I had created earlier with the word uh, CISCO. And here you can see that I can now get access to the global configuration. So the next step in this lab is to configure router one with the same configurations that I've done on router zero. So what I've done so far is is uh, on router one is configure the um, IP address on the interface that will be connecting to the network. And I've also set the host name. So I'll just go ahead and run all the commands that I've done on router zero to get this configured so that it can authenticate to the remote or AAA server. So I'll first start with enabling the password. And I'll use the same as I did on the uh, router zero. And then I'll add a local username, which is local admin with a secret of password. So this command again enables the AAA authentication. And I'll go ahead and create the authentication method list. And again, I'll be using the default method list and I'll specify a radius server by using the word group, then radius and the word local is specifying that the router should use a local account if the radio server becomes unavailable. So here I'm adding the parameters for the uh, AAA server, which is the, the host and the IP address of the host and the RAT key or the radius uh, server key. And on the VTY lines, I have to specify the authentication method list that I want to use for login validation. And this command again is login authentication default. So that completes the configuration on the router. I'll now go ahead and test the telnet connection from my client computer to router one using the telnet and the username and password that has been configured on the AAA server, which is remote admin. So I can see that remote admin, the, the account has been verified. And now it's asking me for the password, which is the enable password, and I can get access to the router. So this here uh, concludes the lab, and I've achieved configuring the AAA server and accessing the devices on the network via Telnet by using the remote account that I've created on the AAA server. This concludes the lab. If you find this lab helpful, please remember to share, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe. Thank you.